In the races leading up to the midsummer break, uh, Red Bull have given us a really interesting view into the function of a front wing. Over the past few races, they've tried over four different sets of flaps on the front wing. So why we try to understand that, first of all, let's just go back and think exactly what the front wing is doing. First of all, the front wing is really only there to create downforce to balance that at the rear. So when the teams are setting the car up, they think about the top speed they need, that gives them their rear wing level because it sets the drag for the car. So the flaps are only there to react to what's being created at the rear. But as we know, the design of the front wing is really complicated and most of its effect, in fact, most of the shape that you see on the front wing and all of the details are there to manage the airflow coming off the wing, how it goes out around the tire, inside the tire, and towards the middle of the wing, what we call the Y250, it's the big vortex that flows through the barge boards and out around the car. What Red Bull have done over these races is be very careful is to create the shaping that they need so they'll always keep the large arch section on the inside of the wing to create this Y250 vortex going through the barge boards, out around the side pods and out around the rear of the tyre. Equally, they still need to create some airflow on the outboard section to push it out around the tyre for the outwash. So what you end up having is a shorter flap, often with a dip in the middle so that you're getting the inner and the outer portion still working with the rest of the flow control aspect of the front wing. And then the downforce creating section is really just the middle of the flaps and they can be played with quite easily by Red Bull over these races. And we'll see this throughout the rest of the season, Red Bull playing just with the flaps, not changing the rest of the structure of the front wing in order to tailor it for every circuit. As well as changing the front flaps of the Red Bull, they've also been playing with the floor along the edge in front of the rear tyre. This has been an interesting area of F1 development for many years, especially now that the cars are wider and the floor is more open to exploitation with aero devices and the number of slots and the shape of the slots they can put in the floor. It used to be that the floor was just merely there to direct airflow around the tyre and then teams found as they raised rear ride height to create more rake in the cars that more airflow was going under the car and hitting the diffuser. This effect is known as tyre square. So they created slots in the top of the floor to create the high pressure from above and direct it underneath to offset this airflow upsetting the diffuser. This has been a direction followed for many years, but what we now find is that teams are finding even more functions for this wider floor, particularly along the full length of the edge of the floor. So rather than the little slots trying to offset the tyre square, we're getting much longer, straighter slots running the full length of the floor. And these are working with the barge boards to create a strong outwash effect. So you get a big vortex running along the floor and trying to push the airflow either side of the tyres. And you get a nice clean airflow passing inboard around the side pods, which then hits the rear wing and the diffuser, making them much more efficient. So this whole floor area is an area which teams are increasingly getting complicated with. And this will even continue into next year because this is an area that hasn't been regulated with the new regulations.